show we're going to talk about i guess immigration guns we ain't gonna talk about slavery because that's the everyday um the everyday thing because if you got a job you're a fucking slave you're a slave to the rhythm rather you get paid a can of beans or you getting paid a hundred dollars an hour you still a slave to the rhythm as long as you live under the capitalist um System which I don't find shit wrong under the capitalist system. I just don't because I'm not a socialist. Again, everybody should have health care. Everybody should have shelter. Everybody should have education. But if I have a great idea, I should be uh, motherfucking paid for that. But excuse my French. I need to tone, tone down my cursing because I know my mama watching. And um, I appreciate my mama. Once again, i like to give a shout out to my mama every time... When this mic turns on because um she's been real. She's been one of the real the the real females and um it was something that my mother said that um some people stayed at the table but I got the fuck up and left the table and some of them same people is still left at that table, you know, and not that those people is bad. <clears throat> It just sometimes you could wait too late and you could get too older in age and shit starts getting trapped off on you and things like that. You know, um, nobody shouldn't really, really be depending on anybody. You know, you get your ass up, you go to work and you make your own way and you make your own way in life. Um, but let me jump down to uh, Donald Trump, the president. Um, he's really being really guerrilla with trying to stop people from coming into the country. And it's like, wow, that American dream right now is going to fuck around and be, I would say, somewhat, somewhat tarnished. That American dream of the 1890s when people come into the Statue of Liberty and things of that nature, that shit is, is, is not... It's not happening no more. He's trying to stop it. And and I'm I'm going to say this. Don't just think that that's just Donald Trump, you know, with with just his views on he want to stop people from coming in. How many motherfucking people went to him and said, I'm tired of these people coming into the country. They're the ones that's getting loans. 
I've been in this country forever. I can't get shit. Rather, let's just say that whether you black or you poor white trash. I can't get anything. Other people was coming into, into the country and I can't get anything. So it's not more or less, it's just him saying that. It's the ideals that was put into his head. Or I guess that voting base of people that voted for him was telling him that shit. That yo, you need to you need to slow these people down from coming in because right now he's getting ready to say that he's they're saying that he's getting ready to cut welfare off. Even if you are a legal immigrant, you're not going to be able to get certain. You're not going to be able to get certain things, certain certain government subsidies anymore. He he wants to eliminate that. He wants to really create. He want to really create borders. You know, um, your country is over here. You stay over here. My country is over here. You stay. You stay here. If you want your country to do better, I think that your people need to have their own political uprising. That's what I guess what make countries better. Look what the fuck is going on right now in China. Right now. They just show those people going into the airports protesting. A, 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 a peaceful protest. Protest is protest whether it's violent or whether it's peaceful. It's an uprising of the people. Because they're not liking how the way the government is structured. And it's like China has somewhat that communist type structure of government. So you, now you got people that's there that's protesting. But let me jump back to Trump. I think Donald Trump, uh, Trump, a lot of people get mad at me for saying, well, why do you love Trump? I'm always going to go on the Mike Tyson factor. Because if it wasn't for you and Don King, I know Mike Tyson was knocking motherfuckers out, but... You had to bring him to the circus. Y'all was the ringmasters, and you had to bring a circus, and you had to fill that arena with those people. And the electricity of the people helped make Mike Tyson who he is. Mike Tyson just wouldn't have made it by himself like that. It was Don King, Donald Trump, and the people that was in attendance watching it. And the millions and millions of people through HBO and pay-per-view that watched those fights. But, and it's crazy because soon when you left, stop fucking with Trump. Your ass went to China and you got knocked the fuck out by Buster Douglas. But that's another story. Um, I was looking, looking at Vlad. And Vlad was talking about how hip-hop music in the 1990s maybe would have added to a race war. With the propaganda that Donald Trump is talking now, I don't think that tight, tight jean rap today. No disrespect, I love you, youngins. Y'all getting paid. Y'all kind of rap is not. It's not so much socially conscious. It's not not saying that the socially conscious rapper is not out there, but the socially conscious rapper is not mainstream. The way Public Enemy was and Brand Nubians and X Clan, those motherfuckers were selling racket with that pro black shit. And Lord Jamal said it on Vlad, like, yo, if that music was happening then, it would have fucked around and be one because it's like Donald Trump, you leading towards that. And it's like, why? Why? Why are you doing that shit? Why are you doing that? You, why do white people think that they, they're losing? Their position on the planet, mainly in America, because you know I, I haven't never really been out of the country. But it's like some places, you know, I guess they accept black people, the artful Negroes. If you're an artful Negro or or, or Negroid, as they say in college, a Negroid of the African race. If you if you're an artist, you uh, uh, accept it. But I don't really know if you know every Negroid is really accepted all around the planet. But it's fucked up. Like when I look at Africa, you're looking at a lot of Africans trying to get out of Africa going into fucking Europe. And they leaving motherfucking Africans on the sea like, yo, y'all are not coming in. And it's like to the motherfuckers that's running those countries into the ground, y'all not seeing that? Y'all not seeing that you're still looking bad even though you taking over the country with your dictatorship? And your military fucking rule that you're not fucking looking good. That your people is running the fuck out of the fucking country. While you niggers here in America is talking about going back to fucking Africa. Y'all don't see that shit. Y'all don't see it. That Africa has a fucking problem. 
Africa is a continent filled with different fucking countries. I don't give a fuck. People come on and say, well, you know what? Well, the BBC News, they always show the bad parts of Africa. A lot of space, a lot of land over there in Africa is fucked up. If it was all good, those people would not be trying to go to Europe. The same, you run into the same motherfuckers that rape the fucking men. That's how fucking bad it is. That I want to go to where the motherfuckers that raped us gave us bullshit fucking religion. And I want to fucking go there because the situation here with a motherfucker that's the, the, the same race, same skin complexion, but I guess maybe some religious ideology on who's God or which way to pray to God. And you're from this tribe that you're getting the fuck out going on a fucking boat. Sailing across the Mediterranean Sea to try to get into fucking Europe and no motherfuckers say that y'all can't get in. And you got to hope that the United Nations come out there and save y'all out the fucking water. Because the country is fucked up and the black Americans want to go back. Not me. I'm going to die right fucking here on this land right here because we were already here before them fucking pilgrims even showed the fuck up. Um, What's up with Snoop Dogg wearing that death row chain? Seeing Snoop Dogg, he's wearing his death row chain, or maybe he has some feelings about maybe that your ass should have went out there and brought all those the, the recordings of death row because death row was only sold for 18, 18 million dollars. Because I remember Warren G saying that he said that we could have pulled all our money together and could have bought all those songs and we could have owned those songs, but I guess everybody didn't want to have at that time. I guess that Suge Knight problem and, you know, him coming and I guess fucking with niggas and shit. But shout out to Snoop Doggy Dog for wearing that, um, that death row chain. Um, it was something else I wanted to talk about. Um, um, I had a thought of, you no, know, looking at TV and I'm, it, it's this HIV medication. And I'm looking at the visual, because, you know, I, I do crappy videos, you know, because nobody don't give a fuck about my video game, because they say my videos is whack and all that other shit. But um, it's so targeted towards the Negro, and it's so targeted towards the gay white man. Like, I didn't really see, like, like, like damn, like, so you heterosexual, heterosexual whites not fucking and y'all motherfuckers don't get HIV, but just the gay white man and the Negro, whether he's gay or straight, get um, HIV. But in any case, I was telling my friend, I'm like, I always tell people like, yo, I just wish the medication that they have now, that medication would have been 20 years ago. And I know that it took research and everything like that. To, to to understand how that 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 HIV cell was splitting and how it replicated itself and you know building up the viral load and things like that, but it's just that it's just one thought of seeing one of my friend's mother. There ain't no disrespect and blowing up nobody's spot or nothing like that. I just seen his mom's maybe like three months ago, four months ago, five months ago, maybe six months ago. Prior to the time we seen her pretty ass woman. And then you heard that, yo, son, such and such moms got the monsters. And seeing them bring their mother outside and seeing how frail she looked. Like as if she was living in the African nation. As if she was Somalian at that time or Ethiopia. That fucking skinny. And suffering from that fucking germ warfare that Richard Nixon and mixed in with Adolf Hitler with his shit, with your depopulations of race. And I, I, I can't, you know, I feel sorry for you. Know what I'm saying? I, it, it was just something that always make it makes me cry when I'm in my own thought, when I think about it. And at that time, I remember me breaking down crying and he had to come and console me like, God damn, nigga. I ain't know it, it was affecting you like that, but... It's just the fact of germ warfare. It's just that some human beings is just so 
their love, but on the flip side of that fucking coin, they could be so diabolical with shit. Like, I hear a lot of motherfuckers be on Facebook talking about, oh, you know, Gaddafi was getting ready to create gold currency to go against the Roman Empire, United States dollar. Yeah, all right. I mean, which United States, you know, threw a monkey rich in that shit, but his own people, this motherfucker got killed in the sewer. They said that the man had fucking heads chopped off of people in a fucking freezer and he would go and speak to those motherfuckers. Why did all those people in that nation of Libya try to get at him to overthrow him? It couldn't have been all that fucking good. He just lost his stranglehold on shit. You know what I'm saying? Being too thick with his shit. He could have loosened up a little bit. You know, they stay always say, what did he? But he was given free education. He was given this. He was given that. He had the best fucking oil on the block. They said that that oil or that crude or that petroleum was real thick over there in Libya. So he had a lot of money running out of there. But why the fuck did those people flip on him the way that they did? You know, maybe he should have stepped the fuck down and all that other shit. But, you know, I remember when Louis Farrakhan tried to get a. Um, some money from um, Gaddafi and the United States was like, yo, you can pop all that rhetoric bullshit, you know, us being devils and all that shit. But if you take that money from Gaddafi, the nation of Islam is going to crumble. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that the nation would have crumbled. You always got the lessons and pieces of papers and doctrines. You can read shit, but that motherfucking big old house that y'all got up there in Chicago, they were the bum rush the show. So, you know. Farrakhan had to fall the fuck back. But you know what's the big, the new big word now? White supremacy. Now, you know Minister Farrakhan been saying white supremacy since, you know, Malcolm got, got clapped up. You know what I'm saying? When he caused the, um, he was in the room. He was in the room and he caused the, 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 the tension. He caused those tensions to get Malcolm clapped up, but... White supremacy is the word of, of, of today. And it's like, why is it such a big motherfucking thing now? And that shit been going on through all the fucking presidents that has been. How is it now that it's something real big? That's fucking propaganda to me. Or maybe I'm not deaf, dumb, and fucking blind to that shit. That I gotta feel, ooh, afraid, white supremacy. That shit is every fucking day. That shit's at my fucking job. They hide behind EEO shit. If y'all know who I am, y'all know who I work for. They hide behind that shit. That white supremacy shit is all the way, all the time. Ever since he came back down from the mountain, he came back down with a vengeance. I don't care that he was chased across the desert. Civilized by some guy named Musa, when he came back down the mountain, he came back down with fucking vengeance. And look what happened. I think that it's been more than 666 fucking years of him controlling the planet. And with that being said, it's fucked up that the Negroid, the Negroid that's here in America, look what we're doing to ourselves. Rather, it's here in Brooklyn. We just witnessed a, 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 a crazy shooting. You know, I guess they caught their intended target, but other people got shot. Look how people get shot in Chicago. Look how people get shot and killed in Detroit. Look how people get killed in L.A. and Compton. It's like, what are we doing to ourselves? And it's like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit here and point my fucking finger at what the fuck Donald Trump doing. When the local Democratic fucking politicians in my neighborhood ain't doing shit. Y'all don't do shit. You built fucking hotels. And them hotels are fucking shelters. What fucking housing initiative are you talking about? I have repeatedly said this on these podcasts for the last eight, nine, ten months. It's a fucking scam and everybody's on the fucking take. And I would hope that if I was fucking to get in the office, I don't get on the motherfucking take. It's a fucking game. That in Brownsville, you have poor people with poor people smothered with angriness, depression, disenfranchisedness, 
What kind of motherfucker you think going to come out of that? A motherfucker that would get mad at another kid because the other kid want to fucking learn. I have grown up with a bunch of dumbass fucking niggas. I'm around a bunch of dumbass fucking niggas now. It's not my fault that your household was fucked up. And we all live in fucking Brownsville. My mom took care of her motherfucking business and still played out in the fucking street. Oh, because your shit is fucked up. You got to be the angry motherfucker. It's a lot of y'all niggas out there that's like that. Y'all should just grab a fucking gun and y'all should just kill y'all fucking mothers. And kill y'all fucking fathers. Why do y'all bring that bullshit out into the street that on somebody that they have shit to do with your household? My mom's just out there playing and shucking and jiving like every fucking body else, but she didn't stay sitting at that fucking table. Not even to drift off the shit, but it all plays a part in one big old fucking domino effect. When the dominoes fall, everything just keeps on fucking falling. This shit is 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 it's sad because I fear for my kids. I got three kids and my peers' kids, some are dead. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. Some of them ran in jail. And it's like, wow. I done watched myself go through my generational bullshit. Watch my sister them generational bullshit. Then watch my children and my stepkids, kid, you know, kid, my stepkids and that generation go through some bullshit. Now my baby is 15 years old. I got one baby that's 15, one that's 13, and one is fucking 12. And I fucking... Scared to death that I tell fucking God I sacrificed my fucking life. You can take mine, let them fucking walk out of here. Amongst these ignorant fucking niggas. That sometimes y'all motherfuckers be even pushing me and it's like, damn, I'm 46 fucking years old. And if I bang your fucking head in, because it's so easy to get a gun. Damn, I got to sit up for 25 years. Then fuck around, they make me the example and give me 50. And I'm already 46. Because y'all y'all are some bum ass niggas. You bums. Oh man. Any case. Um <laughs> what else I would like to talk about? Um I mean I can't even talk about gentrification no more because it's 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 already is. You want niggas out the fucking city. Or you want poor people out the city. It's like, you asses are so fucking stupid. You can't. What was that dude named? Mansi Musa. He was the fucking, the, 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 the African fucking um, dude that they said that was the richest man on the planet. Because he had a lot of minerals. He had gold and salt mainly. And they said that when he made his hajj to Mecca, he gave out so much fucking gold that it was fucking useless. What use would it be with everybody being fucking rich? I mean, everybody's going to drive the Rolls Royce. Somebody got to drive a Civic, right? I mean, that's how capitalism, that's how capitalism works. And then for you cops that protect those rich motherfuckers, you fucking stupid too. You know what I'm saying? In some, in, 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 in some, th some ways, it's like in the movie Batman when Bane was giving his speech... Going at the rich. And they dragging the rich people out their apartments and shit. It's like some of them motherfuckers need to. Which brings me to Epstein. The motherfucker is inside the federal fucking lockup. And he hangs himself. When he just was on a suicide watch. They said that the Justice Department, like, yo, we don't understand because, it, like, like, you know, the security detail is supposed to be this kind of security detail. I guess justice is going to be served because I guess if y'all going to rape the shit out of his estate and get all this money. But the fucked up shit with, 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 with this case is this man was sentenced for this shit like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years ago. I don't know if he kept doing this shit. But they keep bringing up when he was sentenced, and it's like, wow, so the state made a settlement on what they're going to do with me, and now the Fed is going to be like, nah, it can't go like that. I think that maybe he should have he hung himself, I think, after his trial. He should have probably tried to deal with that shit 
and hire him some kind of constitutional lawyers and shit like that? You know what I'm saying? Because I guess they took a lot of your privilege away that you can't really even talk. They gave they gave you some Suge Knight fucking treatment shit that you really couldn't even speak to your lawyers about how the way the fuck your case was going. But maybe you could have got you a good old fucking constitutional lawyer and been like, yo, this is some real double jeopardy type shit, you know? But who knows what I guess the, 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 the interstate thing, when you jump in the state line, you got a little girl on the fucking plane and you bringing her hand in. Now that becomes a federal problem. But why the fuck y'all didn't trial this man 10, 11 years ago, 12 years ago? That's kind of fucked up, you know? Which he was one of those elite people. They said that he was selling little girls, I guess, under the age of 17 or under the age of 16 to world leaders. He had world leaders at his fucking island at the U.S. The US um, the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's a big, big acre of land where he was having all kinds of little girl orgies. That reminds me of that movie Taken, when that little, the girl got taken and he was selling her to, quote unquote, an elite. It's also to say some heebie-jeebie shit done happened. I don't know. Maybe he has some secrets. You know what I'm saying? And maybe he has some secrets or maybe he even said something in the government like, yo, we really don't give a fuck. We going after them too. Because Bill Clinton ass name keeps coming up. His name keep coming up. Bubba name is just keep coming up. Keep coming up. Which I don't give a fuck about you because you helped push those horrible, horrific laws that Papa Bush had pushed. And Papa Bush had made those laws... Because of the crack cocaine thing. But you know what I wanted to say? I'm, I'm, I'm going to crack. New York, I think, had it worse, I would think, than mostly any other state. I would think because of that 1973 Rockefeller law and you had Ronald Reagan's, Papa Bush's crack cocaine law. So it's like, whoa, you was going to get slayed either by the state or you was going to get either slayed by the fucking feds. And I've known a couple of people that it was like, yo, I hurry up and I copped out to the state bit and still got 10 fucking years off that shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, wow, you, you, you motherfuckers, you, 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 you lucked up. You lucked up on, you just lucked the fuck up. You, it, <laughs> It brings me to a story to one of my childhood friends. I ain't going to mention his name. It was his first offense in fucking Georgia. First offense. He said, uh, it was over 125 grams of the cook-up on the fucking table. And I know I said this a couple of podcasters ago. 125, it was over 125 grams of the cook-up on the table. And he had said that the feds, when the feds, you know, when, after he, you know, he went through the thing and I, I, I don't know if he went to trial or he copped out, but the lawyer said, you got 270 months. He said, if we take it this to trial, you're going to get 500 months. This is the fed thing. He said, oh, I said, fuck it, man. Give me that 273 or it was 325 months. He said after the cop out and he said that the lawyer did the divide 12 into, and seen the years, my son went in jail in 91. Son came home 2000, this is 19. He came home 2014. And he came home 2014 only on the strength that Barack Obama had signed that fucking paper. He was like, yo, son, the guidance counselor fucking called me in. He said, so happily, he said, I was just, was, I was so happy that I was in a federal lockup in Pennsylvania. And he said, yo, the guidance counselor called me in. was like, yo, I got something to tell you. Yeah, I need to speak to you. So he said, he comes up in there with the school face like, yo, what you want to tell me? He said, I got a, I, I, I got a Christmas present for you. He said, what the fuck you mean you got a Christmas present for me? He said, you got an early release. Barack Obama done signed for you to get released from jail. He said that he basically fucking melted in his seat. He said, uh, I melted in the seat like the cartoon 
and said, I had to walk back. He said, yo, you, you leaving out of here in two more days. He said they kind of like transferred him down, but he, he was like, the other inmates was looking at him like, yo, why they moving him? He said at 2 o'clock in the morning, when I guess when that process is about to start to happen, he said he just gave up that dap, like, son, I'm going home, son, I'm going home. And he was like, yo, um, so happily, I'm in Pennsylvania. And he said that when they opened up the gate, he was like, yo, which way to the nearest train? He said, you got to walk over that field. He was like, yo, um, I did not give a fuck about walking over the field. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Shout out to my man. You know, I ain't going to throw his name out there. Shout outs, you know, to him coming home. And everything. Um, this week I have to go get my uh, sleep, my sleep machine because I'm not sleeping good. I'm not sleeping good at all. And um, the doctor said there's a chance that you know you're gonna fuck around. You're gonna die in your sleep. And um, fuck around and stop breathing. I hope if I do stop breathing in, in my sleep. Um, I be at peace. That's what I want. I want to be at peace. I want to be free of the bitch ass niggas and the fake ass family. It's like you at peace. Let the earth spin around. Let the flowers grow. But I hope that if I was to die in my sleep, that it's 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 at peace and it ain't no Freddy Krueger motherfucker. You know, tearing my fucking soul apart. You know, all that other shit. Um, let me get off that right there. That's that. That's a little morbid, as they say. Um, I think I somewhat covered a lot of things today. You know, um, like I said, Trump with his immigration thing. Um, R. Kelly, you gonna fuck around and be next. I think you the next motherfucker that's gonna kill yourself. You gonna kill yourself, and I think that the feds is gonna really watch you, R. Kelly, because. Unlike Epstein, unlike Bill Cosby and Weinstein, they don't have physical evidence. They got physical fucking evidence, which I don't understand how that jury even came back of a not guilty back then. I don't know how he come, you know, like how how did that happen? Or I guess the the the, the judge said that you can't use that as evidence. Y'all all know that the tapes was out there, the DVDs was out there with him having sex with this little girl. Y'all was supposed to convict that motherfucker. I don't give a fuck. Peeing on the girl or whatever, whatever. I didn't even see. I just always heard about what was going on in that shit. And it's like, oh, your ass gonna fuck around and you gonna fuck around and kill yourself. So, um, what else I wanted to talk about, um. Hip hop? No. You know, um, I was listening to Pandora and I think I went to my Raphael Sadiq um station and it was some actually some good, decent R and B music on there. It's like I really can't think of the artist that's you know to say it, but it's some real decent good R and B that's out there and I will hope that those you know the the, the, the that um the artists that I did hear I will hope that um, they out there getting their shows, you know, getting their money up because they sounded real good. It was it was a sound of like the 80s and the 1990s, that kind of sound with a little bit of that today, fast tap, you know, beat thing. But it was it was um, it was actually really, 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 uh, really good. Um, I'm going to touch down right quick on Vlad. I'm going to go back to Vlad again. And. Vlad with the um the Keefy D thing, the key the Keefy D interview, which I found that, that Keefy D the Keefy D interview was real good. Yo, bro, did you find my shorts? Okay. And um the Keefy D the Keefy D interview was really really good, really informative, and I will hope that um to all the conspiracy theory all the conspiracy theories on that the government killed Tupac, like, yo, throw that shit the fuck out the door, because the nigga that was in the car said what happened. He passed his nephew the gun, and his nephew shot that fucking gun, and shot that poor baby up, and shot sugar in his head, and, you know, 
May Tupac rest in peace, but you, you actually died on some real gangbang shit. You, you know, that's how the way that you know, you left out of here. You pre they said what they say, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So I guess if you sing by the sword or you rap by the sword, you die by the sword. Because him and Biggie Smalls died some tragic, some real tragic, 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 sad shit. And, and to my grave, I will always remember Tupac. And Biggie Smalls, cause I love I love the shit out of Tupac and um, Biggie Smalls. Um, I don't know. I think I done ran out of any, everything that I wanted to say. I'm 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 tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Um. Oh, shout out to my Rockaway Parkway niggas. Um, it was a picture that they took. On Instagram that they took and it's like wow it, it, it just was amazing that through all these years you know from because this group of dudes they grew up since the 80s like a lot of us you know grew up in the 80s but this click right here grew up through the 80s and it's like wow looking at that fucking picture and you seen a lot of people like, wow, I remember son. And, you know, rather all these years, son with the jail here, son with the jail here, son with the jail here. It's like, wow, to be at this age and you're 46, 47, 48, and you got your childhood friends that you was fucking playing with from 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. That is something very special, especially when it's a lot of y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a, a, a whole bunch of y'all that's still left. And, you know, wow, look at these texts that's coming in. Um, hey, Dad, could you get some Chinese food? Wow. That's from my fat baby, Tony. He wants, he wants some Chinese food. Yeah, I got to get my baby some Chinese food when I get out of here. Um, shout out to the big homie, um, Black Raspberry. I seen her today. I'm just hoping that um, my sister, she could pull this shit off. I hope that you can because it's like my patience is running very thin with a lot of shit and just thinking that, you know what, I think that Lorenzo need to step back as being a, um, a director and let me just focus on being a writer because I like to write. I never, I never, I never wanted to pick up a video camera. That never was my shit. I have actually got low grades in college with video cameras. And me picking up a video camera actually started from my mother threatening me, saying, motherfucker, you better record this Disney trip. And the shit all started with this fucking Disney trip. If that Disney trip would have never fucking happened, I would not have picked up. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have picked up the video camera. It just. It just. It wouldn't have happened. I would not have done that shit. And over the years, I have gotten so much complaints about you not doing this and you not doing that. You not doing this, and it's like you know what? I don't even want to do it no more. That's just how fucked up and nasty it feels that. You can offer your talents to motherfuckers that, you know, in your community and you go so unappreciative. It's like, fuck, how the fuck did I waste my time sitting here in Brownsville this fucking long? Like, why did I fucking do that to myself? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm going to fall back, go on my writing and go meet me some white bitch that got like a thousand tattoos on her body that wants to be a film director. And I'm going to put it in her hands and, like I said, take a step back and just be the executive producer and the writer's credit of it. Let the director direct and stop trying to play the whole thing and you can do it because you need all these different parts. It's like building a fucking car. You don't have the, the man that puts the fucking um, the gas tank, put in the fucking window shield wipe. Not let he work both jobs at one time, but you put on the window shield wiper... I'm putting the gas tank, you putting in the seats, and we're going to make a fucking car. I'm getting tired of, you know, certain people and certain characters that I wrote about, it's like, like, I feel like I have wove y'all into it, like, 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 like reality and fiction, meet, meeting each other, and it's like, I got to get out of that shit. Like, let me just leave y'all motherfuckers alone, 
change up those motherfucking names so I don't gotta owe nobody not a motherfucking penny. You know what I'm saying? Because the way, the, the way that I have always written these scripts, not my first script, Emotional Homicide, with them four bitches trafficking drugs and shit from Africa to Brownsville, not them bitches, but the other two ones that I've, I've written, I didn't really woven those characters in the people that I that, that 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 I'm saying that the story is about because it was always that fear that some monkey rich shit is gonna happen where people's gonna pull back and say, No, I don't want it done. So it's like I never actually really wrote about those people. I wrote about the other people in the script where, you know, I can mix it in all together. Brother, how how far are we going? My head is hurting. I got 10 more minutes, and this is my first time actually talking because I'm not promoting nobody's shit no more. Nobody. I'm not doing it no more. No more music. Don't send me no music. Don't do it. I'm not doing it no more. I'm tired. I'm old. I got a bald spot on my head. You know, um, I got other shit to worry about. I got to worry about my kids going through school right now, and I'm going to get them through school, and... You know, whether what, what me and my moms is going to do with this house, we're going to sell it because we're going to sell this motherfucker at a high fucking price. You know, to whether you some Jew motherfucker or you some bourgeois fucking nigga, because we got some bourgeois fucking niggas that live on the block now. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to talk, talk about this one lady on what she do in, in the movies that she be in. It's like, it's crazy. Like, this bitch is going unrecognizable. And it's like, being that I'm a motherfucker with a video camera and I'm looking, I'm always looking at the screen, I know a face. And she was like, yo, please don't say nothing. I'm like, wow. I'm just going to drop a bomb. The bitch was in Luke Cage. So if, 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 if the bitch is in Luke Cage, you can pretty sure you know who I'm talking about, which characters that they are, that they can actually blend in living in fucking Brownsville. Based upon the salary that you fucking make, living in Brownsville is a fucking steal. If you written out the fucking house for three thousand fucking dollars, that's a fucking steal. Two thousand dollars, twenty five hundred dollars, that's a fucking steal. Crime is down. As long as you go in your ass in your house, locking your fucking door, I don't gotta worry about who the fuck was shot born or who the fuck was divine or what nigga had this fucking corner locked and who was getting money here. I'm not even from here and I don't give a fuck. So like I said, sooner or later. It's going to come down to if this house is going to be fucking sold. Because my man had came on the porch. He was like, yo, son, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I was looking into this house down south. And they on, they on, they on these, these, these new um, complexes shit that they, that they built. Where they put a whole bunch of houses. You see it on TV. And you got that, that street that you could bust that whole U-turn around and come on back around. He said, son, six bedrooms. I, 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 pull in the back. For $260,000? That's not a lot of motherfucking money for a house, but it's like, damn, that's city life to, I guess, rural life, you know? Any given time that I need to get from point A. Right now, if I need to get to the fucking Bronx, I could walk to that L train and transit to another train to get to the fucking Bronx. It may be going to take me a long motherfucking time to get there, but I don't got to worry about using the car. So those kind of things is just a corner fucking store. It ain't too many motherfucking corner stores out of state like that. I always looking at a fucking store next to a gas station. So it's like, do you want to trade your life for that? You know. There's some there's some things in Brownsville that I want to conquer before I go, and one of those things that I always want to do I always wanted wanted for, I always wanted to run for public office, and when I've tried to make my way in that shit and seeing how the game is played and tried to get on the community board, it's like damn I've been this good fucking boy I only got, I only got a yo I only got locked up one time in my life. Criminal possession of crack cocaine with the intent to sell. That was 1995. This is 2019. Every other running that I had in the Lord was a bag of fucking weed and a cup of fucking liquor. And you telling me y'all couldn't put me in, but y'all put motherfuckers in. All right, they're black. But these motherfuckers wasn't raised here in Brownsville and they got seats. Ow. Well, you know what? I'm going to end this show. I'm going to send a shout out to S Street Media. 
for having me here today and um giving me a giving me a purpose because brother man said nigga you got five more minutes and giving me a purpose you know because i can go home because I'm, I'm i'm tired you know i'm a little sick my breathing is kind of fucked up and i'm hoping to get this machine you know the doctor gonna prescribe me with this machine because you know how health coverage is and shit. Motherfuckers be like, oh, we're we're oh that we're not paying for that, so you're gonna have to come out of pocket to get this fucking machine and all that shit. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna give a shout out to S Street Media and their movement because my man Mav, he pushes his fucking stuff, he pushes his shit, man. And it's like, damn, I wish I would have met a nigga like this in '91. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Maybe this shit, you know what I'm saying? Because I always been mad at my fucking music career and trying, and, and I'm going to tell you before, before before these lights go out for me, I remember the crack dealer that was on my corner, his name is Fendi, he's the fucking dude that was managing that bitch, Nicki Minaj, and she did the jack move on his ass, and he hangs around with Jaded Kiss and Fabulous and all that other shit, you know. And he was supposed to have taken me to get the internship at Uptown Records when Puff Daddy was more or less the intern, you know, coming into him getting paid, you know, having a paid salary. And he's the vice president of Uptown Records and Father MC is dear and Heavy D is dear and Joe C is dear and Mary J. Blige is dear. And these fucking people at that fucking City College event got crushed. And I'm like, fuck, that could have been me because Puff used to always throw parties at BMCC and fucking City College because he's that Harlem Yonkers, them Harlem Yonkers ass niggas and shit. And he would always throw those parties in there, the celebrity basketball game. They, that's what it was, the celebrity basketball game. And you just had to fucking get into BMCC to look at the celebrity basketball game. And I used to always go back and tell this, this, this crack cocaine dealer that was on the corner of Amboy and Herzl Street. Yo, you got to get me this interview with this guy. And it's like, oh, man. My music career has never gone nowhere since that fucking event. And Puff, I hope to one day meet you because, you know, this is the Black Raspberry Show. And you do sling black fucking raspberry Ciroc. So it's like, if I could get the conversation with you to, to, to converse with you. I know you'll be like, you know what? Let me just restart Bad Boy Records and let this fat motherfucker, you know, this fat motherfucker that loves me and Suge Knight, let me give this motherfucker this opportunity to rejuvenate and hopefully live out his fucking dreams. And math, I'm tired, brother. And we're going to end the show. Mom, I love you. I love you for not kicking me out your house. And all that other shit, which is, it's my house too, because I was the first kid in, and I'm going to be the last one out. Peace.
that tried to play the dawn Like I don't walk with the pump Looking for a sucker to spray it on Lay it on like my name LeBron Do the most like I'm Westbrook Sanchi in the Bugatti Bitches say that's my best look I'm Wolfgang over the stove And you know a nigga the best cook In the dope at least or not Now you getting hooked Watch them bitches get you lined Then them bitches get you booked Thinking with your dick Got you thinking what they took Should've took your time with that bitch Stupid how you look uh, Trying to get your shit back Riding around with your click clack Lamar Odom crying for that bitch back Dunbar niggas get the big stacks Bust the Big Macs Whoa. Uh, uh. Stumbled out drunk from the bar Running for the trunk of your car Just like the punk that you are My bitch cute little deuce deuce Tucked in her bra Doop doop She didn't make it that far She didn't make it that far You ran off but didn't make it that far Look at the barrel like She ain't got to take it that far Oh oh Ride around With the click clack Trying to get your bitch back